what happens, we get people that join the Connected Dog or want to join Recallers or our Homeschool the Dog program. And they'll come for one of two reasons. Well, I would say three reasons. Number one is we have a new dog or a new, a new rescue dog or a new puppy, and we don't know what to do. So there are some people that come for that. There are some people that say, I really dig this reinforcement-based dog training. I love your Shape by Dog podcast, and I just want to learn more. I'm hungry to really make this investment in my dog and myself. So this is how I want to spend my time training my dog. And then probably the majority come to not just our program, but dog training in general, because they have a challenge. That their dog is being naughty. That they, they've they decided that they don't like the behavior of the dog. And if you listen to Shape by Dog and you listen to episode number 215, which if you haven't listened to that, it's probably one of my favorite episodes, that I talk about dog training like an iceberg. And the top of the iceberg is, an iceberg sounds bad, but I'm just using it because, you know, there's it's, the top is all that you see. Still waters run the deep, right? There's a lot of st stuff underneath there. So the top of the iceberg is all that you see. And this is when people say, I want my dog to stay off or calm down, or I want my dog to come. He's blowing me off. And that's a relationship of command and control. A, you know, it goes back to dog training 200 years ago was very uh, dominance based. And it was about, I am the master and you need to be in control and do as I say. It's really a shallow relationship, right? Imagine any relationship you have with your kids. I mean, in the, in the 40s and the 50s, I'm maybe the 30s or the 20s, maybe more so, that's how relationships between parents and children were, children's. <laughs> that it was children are to be seen and not heard and out of sight, out of mind. Like, don't bother the adults. And sometimes maybe even if you had money, the nannies did the raising. So what kind of relationship did you have? And so the tip of the iceberg are when you think of dogs as I need them to do this. I need them to be this way. And when you get locked up in that, you end up with breed traits that you get angry about. My beagle just wants to sniff. Well, imagine that. Guess what they're really, really good at? Guess what they're better at than most dogs? Yeah, sniffing. Or my husky just wants to pull on leash. So I'm not saying these characteristics means your dog can't be trained. I'm just saying you have to be a bit more patient and open-minded about your approach to the training. So wanting the dog to be something or do something is about, I need to control my dog. My dog needs to be under my control, right? And so what you're doing in the connected dog is we're creating a different relationship. It's not one where we're looking to control because one of the things you learn really early on as a competitor and I've been a competitor at world championships for decades and decades. And one of the first things you learn in the mental game of sport is you need to release thinking you're in control of anything other than your own thoughts and actions. So what another competitor does, what somebody says about you, how the announcer mispronounce your, your, your name is none of your business. Your responses are all that you can control. We can never control our dogs. Do my dogs do exactly what I want? I would be willing to bet 90% or more of the time they do. And the other 10% with a second reminder, they would. But I never believed I had the right to expect them to. Their responses are feedback. And that middle area beyond command and control, where we get a deeper relationship with our dogs, is one of cooperative teamwork. If you're playing the games in the connected dog, I bet you're already seeing that, where your dog is looking forward to these training sessions, where they're getting a little more sparkly, where they're getting more, you, you might have described your dog as, oh, he's lethargic, he's bored, he's not, he doesn't really like much. All of a sudden, yeah, he does like a little bit more. Whoa, there is a little personality in there. Because you're, you're seeing now the very beginning of a transformational relationship. And that's where when I walk my dogs down the street or when people see how well behaved this guy is, he's sleeping now, that they go, wow, 
wow, that's the kind of relationship I'd love with a dog. Wow. That's, that is impressive. And it really, it, it isn't because I'm a professional dog trainer because my students get the same wow every single time. We have a recaller student who uh, named Belinda and her dog Phoebe. She's from Australia and she just won our student contest, by the way. And Belinda was a cat person. She never had a dog, never had any desire to have a dog. And she was driving to work one day and found this weak, frail little puppy, a bag of bones that somebody had pitched into the ditch. And she didn't even know if this dog was alive and it, she ended up being alive. And she took her in and nursed her back to health. And of course, got her me medical care, ended up keeping her. And within nine months, the dog was ruling her life and ruining her life. And so that's why she came to Recallers. And now we call her the ambassador for the program because everywhere she goes, people say, wow, that's the kind of dog I'd like to have. And so you might think that's really, and that is where you're heading in the Connected Dog Guys, these games, they come together and you are going to see the wow as well. With the It's Your Choice game, I remember I was giving a lecture at the United States Pug National Championship many, many years ago. I think it was in Wisconsin. And I was at the, the, the soiree the night before, and one of the uh, executives, they had all these like cold cuts on a coffee table. It was a big round coffee table. And the, I don't know, the president, the vice president, somebody came in and said, wow, it's a good thing there's no, going to be no pugs coming to this event. That table would be cleared. And I laughed and I said, I could help you with that. And He's like, well, maybe you could help somebody with another dog, but my dog's a rescue dog. And so the justification starts. My dog is a rescue dog. He's always stolen food. He's six years old. He's not trainable, yada, yada, yada. I said, is there anything else you'd like to share? Because when we're done, or even like we've got an hour before you start, I could show you how your dog will ignore all that food. And it would only take me, I don't know, 15 minutes. And I did like, I did four little sessions of two or three minutes. And then the dog was walking around, not looking at the table. And the man's jaw was down to here. And he said, wow, one transformational game. But there's something even below that. The deepest level of relationship is the level of connection where you recognize that you're giving your dog grace. Oh, your dog's, you know, shredding something. Well, Previously, you would have screamed at him and punished him and you, what did you do? And now you realize that you turn everything on yourself and you look through the lens of what can I control? Can I control my dog making these choices when I'm not here? No, but I can control the dog's desire to make them. And so it's not what did you do? It's what did I do? I left you alone in a big area before I get, had 100% confidence that you'd make the right choice. Buddy, I'm not going to do that again. And so you learn to give your dog grace. And that grace eventually extends to other people in your life. And instead of getting angry because what somebody else does, the guy cutting you off in traffic, somebody cuts me off in traffic instantly, I, I go to curiosity. Wow, I wonder if his wife's having a baby. Wow, I wonder if he is just a jerk. Wow, I you just have these curiosity conversations. Okay, so I'm not 100% there. So, and eventually that grace that started with your dog, it extends to the most difficult person to give grace to, and that's yourself.